Hey guys, James here once again, this time bringing you another episode of Miami Last Cast, your 16th of many episodes of your video games podcast out of Miami, Florida. Today we got a really packed show, of course I'm going to be going into what I've been playing in the last uh, couple weeks. I'm going to go over new releases for last week and this week, that's uh, the 17th all the way through the 27th, I think, let me see. Yeah, so the 16th all the way through the 27th, uh, I got some details on some South Park stuff, some Fire Emblem Warrior stuff, uh, Cuphead is doing very well, um, let's see what else, Players Underground, Player Unknown Battleground overtakes so PUBG uh, is in the news again, Famitsu has a new survey I want to talk to you guys about, Humble Bundle sold. Uh, to a big conglomerate, I'm going to talk about that. PS5 is in the news again, especially since uh, Paris Games Week is right around the corner. And Sony is publishing a game on the Switch, which is pretty interesting. Uh, Vita, uh, we're going to talk about Vita for a little bit, for as long as the life as it has left. Uh, Switch is in the news again, uh, so we're going to spend some time there. And then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Xbox backwards compatibility along with some comparisons and then we're going to finish off with some news that I want to share with you guys. So first things first, uh, I've been playing a ton of games uh, for the most part, a lot of the same stuff. I spent some time in Stardew Valley, significant time on the Switch, man. This is right at home on that console. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, it's 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 the best way to play, hands down. It's better than sitting in the couch. Uh, although you can do that with the Switch, it's better than than uh, than sitting in your chair in front of the monitor or in front of your TV. It's nice to be able to sit in the couch uh, or wherever for that matter and be able to play it on the go and just pause it whenever you want, pick up and go uh, again. I've also spent some time with NBA Playgrounds. NBA Playgrounds, uh, for those who don't know, it's a, a it's a a throwback in the vein of uh, NBA Jam, uh, and NBA Street, that sort of game. I've been having tons of fun with that game, surprisingly. I can't believe I missed out. I'm a huge NBA fan, and since I've been kind of down on the EA uh, and 2K uh, news with all their VC and microtransaction bull, I've been staying away from those games. Uh, but I did get to play a little bit of NBA Playgrounds, which was tons and tons of fun. Uh, but... Uh, the games that I spend most of my time with this week are Shadow of War. Uh, I went ahead and uh, and borrowed a copy. I, I, like I said, I don't want to spend any money on any games that uh, kind of promote these microtransactions, especially in games like Shadow of War, which I don't I don't feel the need them. Uh, um, but I did get to play a little bit of that game. I do got to say this: it's a beautiful game. I mean, the game is freaking outrageously beautiful the textures are off the chain the uh the gameplay is phenomenal i mean you're talking about um it's a mix of like you're fighting from uh batman arkham uh with the climbing ability of assassin's creed so um it has all the best things from those games uh the story from i mean if you're into the lord of ring lord of the rings um world even though it's not set in lord of the rings is based on that world obviously with mortar mordor uh it's very very cool um the game I, i've only spent maybe an hour and a half uh, and so when i spend a little bit more time i talk to you guys about my ultimate thoughts on the game but my first impressions on the game is that it's very good it's very pretty uh it's unfortunate with the whole microtransaction thing uh that it's it's in there but the game itself is phenomenal i i love that world i love being in that um that kind of uh fantasy setting uh so it's definitely a great great game i also got to play a little bit of uh south park the fractured butthole uh i gotta tell you i missed the stick of truth i i didn't play the first one unfortunately now this is making me feel like going back it, it's bringing back all the memories of watching the uh you know the series on tv it looks the same it, it acts the same as it's like you're playing an extended uh you know version of one of these episodes it's an rpg uh that's got a really interesting mechanic so you kind of open up the game and one of the mechanics is you you, <laughs> you go into the people's houses and you basically take a dump in their toilet and it, they make a little like mini game out of that and you could 
uh, kind of get some rewards depending on uh, the level or how many stars you get from these little mini games. And at the end, you just take a duke uh, in somebody's toilet. So that's pretty interesting. <laughs> Uh, the I mean anybody who's watched South Park knows that it's freaking hilarious. It, if you like that type of comedy, obviously because it's very very outrageous. Uh, they do not hold back uh, in their content, but uh, South Park, uh, the Fracture Behold, man, it's it's freaking amazing. Uh, on that note, they did share a little bit of news in regards to uh, what's going to be available in their season pass. So. Uh, they're breaking into basically a, a couple of separate parts here. So you got the danger deck, and they describe it as players will have the, to face the ultimate combat challenge in Dr. Timothy's danger deck. They will be able to unlock exclusive costumes and artifacts. Danger deck will be available December 20, 2017. Uh, then you have From Dust Till Casa Bonita, a new story where players will team up uh, with the Coon and Mysterion to defeat a demonic presence at Casa Bonita. This content will be available in 2018. And then you have Bring the Crunch, uh, which introduces new story, including all new superhero classes. It will also be available in 2018. And then for those who purchase the uh, season pass day one, uh, they will incentivize you guys with uh, Relics of Zaron costume uh, and perks pack. Uh, and that's for October 24th. So that's going to run you $29.99. And it's going to extend the game. It appears through, uh, if not early, through mid-2018. Uh, so uh, for those who are interested in that, obviously. I, I also played a little bit of, well, a lot a bit of Fire Emblem Warriors. I, I was kind of on the fence about picking this game up. Um, I didn't know if I really wanted to kind of get the game uh for 60 bucks i don't know i, I was like dynasty warriors I, I love dynasty warriors don't get me wrong but uh i felt like it was dynasty warriors with the skin and, and really it is it's dynasty warriors with the skin but they really like knock it out of the park with the story uh, you know especially for those who like fire emblem um they'll like the characters they'll fall in love with that story it's nothing to write home about but it's definitely interesting it's definitely worth picking up I've been spending a ton of time with it. They add a lot of tactical and RPG elements to, you know, the Dynasty Warrior world. So uh, there's that. Uh, the The combat is very much Dynasty Warriors. You're kind of just battling through uh, these kind of uh, maps. And, uh, you, you know, you're taking on thousands of, 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 of people at a time. And really, you need to concentrate on uh, key characters, anything with the life bar. Uh, is really who you want to aim for, and then the rest you can just kind of run through. But all your favorite characters that you know from the Fire Emblem series are in this game. Uh, it's really taken a, a chunk of my time. I didn't think that it would, but the game is actually really, really good. Um, and on that front, they actually talk a little bit about the season pass for that particular game. So they actually broke it up. They're breaking it up into three separate DLC packs, similar to that of. Um, the South Park Fracture but whole. So this one's going to sell for $19.99. Or you can purchase the three separate DLC packs for $8.99. And they describe the first D DLC pack as Fire Emblem Fates. Uh, three new playable characters, which is Azura, Niles, uh, Oboro. Uh, then you have three new history maps. Each with new stories featuring various characters. Five new costumes. And 13 new broken armor models. So that's the first DLC pack. Second DLC pack is called Fire Emblem shadow dragon uh it also has three new characters navir navari minerva lind or linde um three new history maps uh each with new stories as well four new costumes six new weapons and nine new broken armor models and then finally uh that one actually by the way the first one's for december the second one's february 2018 and then march 2018 you have fire emblem awakening which again has three new characters you got a wine uh, Tharja, Olivia, and then you have three new history maps with new stories. Uh, you have three a new costumes, seven new weapons, and ten new broken armor armor models. So that is due out. Actually, you can purchase that now for $19.99, and you can start getting the content through March of 2018 from December 2017. Uh, also, some scores are in for. Uh, the Fire Emblem game and it looks like it's averaging about an 8 or so uh, so they have 
Uh, the lowest uh, Metro UK gave it a four, which I don't know if that's a four out of five, but that seems kind of low. Uh, and then on the high, and you're talking about an eight point one or so. Uh, so the the range is definitely there. I for one, I mean, if it, it, I I'm infatuated with the game. I absolutely love it. I did come back from loving the, you know the the Dynasty War game. So you definitely have to like that style, uh, and it definitely helps if you like the Fire Emblem world. If you like those two combinations, then this game is is dope. I don't know if it's I still don't know if it's worth sixty bucks. Uh, so for those who kind of want to wait and see, you can definitely do that and see when it drops to fifty or forty. But I mean, anybody who knows Nintendo, these games don't drop in price, unfortunately. So I guess that's a smart thing on their on their end. But uh, definitely the the reviews are are coming in reasonable with um what the game is and 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 uh you know how good it is so uh fire emblem warriors uh definitely would recommend to those who like that type of world uh and then uh cuphead broke a million within the first couple weeks so cuphead for those who don't know is a game that's been in development seems like for like a decade at this point it is basically a boss rush uh, with some um, platforming elements as well. They added that to the game. It is uh, a kind of a, a, a 19... It's got like a 1980s uh, kind of video game vibe with, uh, with like a 1930s uh, cartoon skin all over. And they freaking nail it, man. The game is absolutely bonkers. It's an Xbox One uh, exclusive along with PC. Uh, definitely, I mean, if you guys don't have the Xbox version, this game is very easy to run. You can get, basically run it on a on a very low end uh, laptop or you know computer or sorts. Definitely give this game a whirl, man. It's a tons and tons of fun. I think I'm gonna stream this game. Uh, it's it's definitely one that kind of uh, gets you to play over and over again because you want to do better. You want to beat these bosses. It's very difficult, uh, um, but fair. I wouldn't say that it's unfair at all. I, you know, you you kind of play throughout the game, and and if you do lose, you kind of feel like you know I could have done better. Uh, you don't feel cheated. Uh, at least I don't. I haven't felt cheated, and 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 the game is just beautiful to look at phenomenal phenomenal game and i'm happy that they're doing well i'm hoping this kind of sends a message and and sets up uh you know more of these types of games on the go forward um so i did want to talk to you guys a little bit about the new releases that are coming out i'm going to go back from the again from the uh, 16th uh, through uh the 27th so uh kind of going back gran turismo after a long 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 wait uh, came out or comes out on the October twenty uh, or October seventeenth. Uh, so those who are racing fans, uh, that's been getting pretty good reviews as well. The game looks pretty dope. Uh, then you got Rogue Trooper Redux. That's for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. That's also October seventeenth. Uh, as I mentioned before, South Park: The Fracture Bro Hole. <laughs> Every time you say, it, you gotta laugh it up, man. <laughs> so you got the fractured butthole on the seventeenth. That's for PC. Xbox One and PS4, and then also on the 17th you have WWE 2K18. That's PC, uh, PS4, and Xbox One as well. And then I got here on this list for October 19th, Age of Empires Definitive Edition. But I know that that got moved into 2018. Uh, Fire Emblem Warriors, as mentioned, that came out on October 20th. That's for the Switch exclusive. And then Destiny 2 makes its PC debut on October 24th. Uh, I wonder how how that's going to do, you know, uh, for a long time. I mean, this game has only been for console, so I wonder how that's going to affect the world of Destiny 2. And, and if I mean, it's going to expand it. And I always feel like these sort of games make or thrive on PC, so uh, hopefully that's the case. Uh, and then you have du Just Dance 2018. That is on October 24th. And then, of course, the three big, huge titles that most of us have been waiting for, you got... Uh, on October 27th, you have for PC, Xbox One, and PC, Assassin's Creed Origins. After a year of hiatus, I mean, this game looks absolutely beautiful. Bonkers is based in, in the Egypt world, uh, which uh, I didn't expect, to be honest with you. I, I, they're going back to Origins for real. This this is a, a, a beautiful setting, great world. I mean, they revamped, reworked a lot of the 
the things that uh, Assassin's Creed had uh, kind of holding it back in a sense. So it's good that they went back to the drawing board on that one. Definitely still going to pick that one up and play it. Unfortunately for Assassin's Creed, there's also Super Mario Odyssey coming out that day for the Switch exclusive, which I'm definitely picking up day one. That's going to be the game that eats up a lot of my time and is why I'm trying to rush through Fire Emblem uh, Warriors to kind of get that game done before Super Mario hits, which uh, looks like it's going to be a phenomenal game based on some leaked uh, scores uh, that came out early. And then also on that day, you have on October 27th, PC, PS4 and Xbox One is Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. So that game looks really dope. That game is is like is absolutely bonkers and gruesome uh but it's you don't see it anymore you don't see these type of first person uh only really games with these huge stories anymore so it's definitely welcome uh you know doom was another one that did one, this is not surprising it's coming from Bethesda, but uh definitely uh i don't know if i can pick that one up day one especially with assassin's creed coming out day and super mario odyssey it's just i you know you could only put your, your, your time in so many things at once, uh, unless you're a, an A Street prostitute, then you can do all sorts of things at once, but uh, I digress. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Players Unknown Battlegrounds also made news. It seems like they're constantly in the news, right? So, apparently, they overtook the, uh, the lifetime um, player base for or in Korea, so there's more players playing this than uh, uh, what is it? Uh, League of Legends, which is I mean that's pretty huge because League of Legends has been like the front runner uh, for many 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 uh, years at this point, uh, and this thing just took it over. So I wonder if this is a sign of things to come for the rest of the world. Uh, if this game is actually gonna take over League of Legends, I mean here is big. Because you have ESPN kind of promoting this game and you have these huge tournaments. Uh, so I wonder if PUBG can definitely hold out. But I mean, the game is doing gangbusters. Uh, and it's, it's nice to see that uh, people are, are, are kind of accepting. I mean, this thing only has one map right now. But it's, I guess it's so much fun because each, each, each new match is it's its own story, right? So uh, it's cool to see PUBG do that. Uh, and I wonder if that will affect the rest of the world. So the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is basically there is, there was a, a Famitsu held a a um, kind of a survey to see what people's most anticipated games were. And I thought the, the, the list was pretty interesting. So one of these games just came out, but uh, at number 10, so they went top 10. So uh, at number 10, you have Dynasty Warriors 9 uh, is one of the most anticipated games. Uh, at number eight, you have Gran Turismo Sport, which just came out. Uh, then you have Xenoblade Chronicles 2 at number eight. Uh, number seven, City Shrouded in Shadow. So I can't say I've heard of this game, but uh, it's, de- it's one of the, the, uh, the most anticipated games. Uh, City Shrouded in uh, Shadow. I got to look that one up. Uh, Hak- Hakuro ga- ga- Gotuku. Go- Gotuku. I think this is a Japanese survey. <laughs> um, and then you have Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon at number five. Number four is Kingdom Hearts 3. I know I'm waiting for that. Number three is Super Mario Odyssey. So that is, again, you know, Assassin's Creed is not on here. Wolfenstein is on here. But, which, but you know, Mario Odyssey, which, I don't know, man. That game looks phenomenal. And then at number two, you have Final Fantasy VII Remake. So, I got to tell you, my favorite game of all time is Final Fantasy VII for all the reasons that most people give you. Um, you know, it, it, it was just one of the games that introduced me to gaming. And I'm definitely stuck. They got my vote for most anticipated game there. And then the number one most anticipated game uh, is Monster Hunter World, uh, which is coming to PS4. So, uh, Monster Hunter makes its debut. Not a debut, but a long... It, it's been it's been a hiatus on... on, on kind of sony platforms for a while it feels like it's been exclusive to nintendo for many many years and uh here we go so that edges out edges out by a few votes uh final fantasy 7 remake so monster hunter worlds is the most anticipated game according to a famitsu 
survey. So I find that interesting. I wonder what you guys uh, are expecting to, uh, coming in the next year or two. Uh, I think I'm going to make a list. Uh, you know, God of War is definitely on there for me. Uh, I'm definitely anticipating a game that hasn't been announced, which is a Yu-Gi-Oh game for Switch. I really want that. I want like a really, really, really good you know, card game, you know, maybe Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh! preferably, but Magic, uh, you know, give me, give me, give me something on there, man. I think that's, that system is prime for that sort of game. Um, but tell me what you guys think. What is it you guys are anticipating? Sound off. Let me know in the comments. Uh, let me know what you guys are, are looking forward to. If any of these games are on your list uh, or um, just shout out, man. Just shout out. Uh, this is another thing that's in the news. So hum, Humble Bundle, which is a a website that kind of organizes organizes digital content. They do like these crazy ass sales, and it's all for uh, charity. They've taken in, I think it's two and a half million. No, I'm sorry, that's way on there. Oh, they they've collected over 106 million for charity through the site. They have over 10 million customers, and they just got out about by uh, IGN. So this is the official statement. So we choose uh, IGN because they really understand our vision, share our passion for games, and believe in our mission. Uh, and then IGN came back and said, hey, look, uh, we don't intend on changing anything. If, if it's not broken, do not fix it. Um, and it's, they say that they've been trying to kind of get them to come over for almost a year. They've been trying to buy them out. Uh, the idea is just to feed them with the resources they need to keep doing what they they're doing. So hopefully that's the case. Hopefully they don't change it. I, Humble Bundle is is something that's really cool. You know, it's it's a great way to support a charity, uh, and it's a great way to donate. Uh, but I mean, let's get real. These these deals that they have when they do these charities are amazing. Uh, there's a there's a great chance to kind of get games on a deep 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 sale. Um, and I hope that they stay true to the world. IGN stays true to their word, uh, kind of lays back and just lets them do their thing. But I am definitely interested to see how this affects Humble Bundle going forward. So with, uh, you know, Paris Games Week around the corner and Sony kind of teasing us with there's huge announcements coming out uh, to kind of stay tuned. Of course, Everybody's talking about PS5. It's been, you know, rumors for, I feel like, the last few weeks or maybe even months at this point. So experts are saying that this thing is going to come out 2019, 2020. Uh, and, and, and in some cases, people are saying 2018. Uh, and I see, and at first I was like, look, no way, man. I mean, PS4 is doing gangbusters there. Why would they mess it up by releasing a PS5 at this point when they haven't even slowed down on the sales for PS4, right? So why PS5? And now I got to thinking, I'm like, look, Xbox One X is coming out right around the corner. I mean, at this point, it's out in a couple weeks. And they're definitely trying to take away the thunder from PlayStation. Uh, there's already an article I'm going to share with you later where they can they basically compare uh, some of the graphical differences between PS4 Pro and Xbox One, and definitely Xbox One uh, heads out. But I think that this world's most powerful console thing that they're going for, Sony doesn't like that very much. They don't they don't want to be behind the eight ball here, and I feel like right before they have an, they have a. a uh, a convention that's 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 happening about a week before the launch of the Xbox One X, and it's the first time, a perfect time to ruin their party. So imagine they say that the PS5 is coming out. Uh, obviously, it's not going to come out before the Xbox uh, One X, but kind of say, hey, look, we got a new one coming out. So they now they, it kind of takes the world's most powerful console uh, kind of title away from Xbox, uh, and you know, it, it, you know. Xbox is kind of shooting themselves in the foot right now with their kind of crappy release that uh, games that they're having at, at the launch of this thing. There's really no reason to get it with Crackdown being moved back. And except for those junkies that want, you know, the, the latest and greatest, obviously the machine, I'm not, not knocking the machine, but at the end of the day, you need games, right? And now if PS5 kind of throws you know, wrenching, what's a, a wrench in the gears or whatever the hell that saying is. 
and kind of ruins the message for for Microsoft. I think that this will be a definitely a, a play by Sony. Uh, I think this is the perfect time to announce something like that, or at least somewhere near it to kind of uh, take away some of the steam and some of the uh, momentum that Xbox is trying to build up here with their Xbox One X console. So I wonder what you guys think. I wonder if you think this that is good to do it. Would you guys pick up the PS5? Or you do you guys just want to hang on to this PS4 PS4 generation a little bit longer? Um, I wonder what you guys think. I per- personally believe that um, it's smart for them to announce it. I don't necessarily want it uh, yet, but if they do it, I, I you know it's a smart thing to do. Uh, to kind of take away some steam from Microsoft, as I mentioned earlier. But it has to be backwards compatible. I mean, people are invested in this kind of ecosystem right now. And to kind of throw a new system in there, I think it's going to piss a a lot of people off. And it can work in the reverse, because if they say, you know, if they don't say that it's backwards compatible, which I think is crazy, then it gives more reason for people to jump ship, because getting a PS5 or a PS4 almost is like jumping ship if it's not backwards compatible, right? So... Why don't why wouldn't people jump ship to to Xbox at that point? So they got to be careful with the way they message this. Hopefully they do a good job. I'm definitely stoked to see or to hear uh, what what kind of what news comes out of Paris Games Week. But uh, this is definitely up there as one of the potential things that that can do it. Remember another thing that that uh, Sony has is they have a big stake in 4K, right, with their 4K televisions and Blu-ray players and such. So. I think they kind of been waiting for uh, more of a more of, of 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 you know 4K television sales to be able to, to justify the release of a PS5, which I think is going to be their true play to a 4K uh, kind of ecosystem. Uh, so again, we'll 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 see what happens, but definitely uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Uh, going forward, especially with uh, with Paris Games Week right around the corner, and then more Sony news. <laughs> this one's pretty interesting because Sony has a uh, a, a publisher uh, which they they they've um, they've announced. It's called Unties, I, I believe, uh, and they got a project. One of the games that's coming out of the studio is Tiny Metal, which is a um, kind of a a turn-based uh, um, kind of strategy game, uh, uh, and th- this thing's gonna get published on the Switch. So this is more uh, of, of e- more evidence that you know there's not gonna be any portable system coming out uh, out of the Sony camp, and they're gonna go unopposed on on Nintendo. So so yeah, so <laughs> they're gonna publish a game on the Nintendo Switch, which is pretty crazy. I mean, it's not the first thing that happened. Microsoft is doing with Minecraft, but that's kind of like that was already happening when they bought it out and they, they didn't want to ruffle any feathers. But to just come out right out and 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 kind of publish a game on the Switch, your competitor, which right now is picking a great steam. I mean, they're doing gangbusters and to kind of feed them a game there uh, rather than putting on your own system. I don't know if it's, it's, it's an admittance that that they're going to be running on a polls or, or what it is, but um, it's definitely going to be interesting. And then on that note, uh, NIS America basically said, hey, look, we're trying to uh, support PlayStation Vita. They said, look, we're going to go ahead and support them digitally speaking, but they had this to say in regards to making more games on the Vita. So uh, we still see that when we release games on Vita, we have a fan base that's there and that they got to get it and love it. But as a whole, it's not really the place to be right now. The PC or the, the PS Vita is obviously on its way out, and the Switch is very, very strong. One thing in particular that makes it strong is that it has that handheld function. So going forward as a company, we want to target PS4, Steam, and Switch because over the next two years, the Switch market is only to grow, going to grow and become stronger. So this is. To me, the final nail in the coffin for the Vita, NIS America is one of the last few kind of publishers uh, slash developers that are that are supporting this machine. And, um, you know, it's the fact that they're moving on to the Switch is is 
is kind of uh, admitting that. So <laughs> I feel bad, man. I have a huge library uh, for PS Vita, but I haven't touched it in a while. Um, you know, with the switch, with the switch out, it's been, uh, you know, especially if more and more of these games come out, it's going to have more and more or less and less reason for, for us to play our switches. Right. So again, on that note, uh, Nintendo switch for the past three months has been the top selling console out of the PS, uh, four and Xbox one. Uh, they just announced that they sold over 2 million units in the U.S. alone. Just the U.S. They sold 2 million units. This thing, and, and this is not even with any holiday season, right? This is just like, you know, since March to now, which is basically spring and summer. This is not typically the time people buy consoles. So, you know, a lot of people have been saying, hey, look, it's not, it, it didn't sell as much as what the PS4 did during their window, which... Yeah, but PS4 was kind of the, the the first console in this whole new generation. They did it during a holiday season, right? So this is very, very impressive. Uh, I feel like there's going to be more and more support on this thing. NIS America coming out and just saying it uh, is, is obviously proof of that. But... Uh, you know, it's it's gonna be great, and then not only that, but not only have they been selling gangbusters on on the, on, on the hardware side, but they're killing it on the software side. So, uh, the, they're they've been on the top ten software charts with Nintendo's, um, you know, Mario Cross Rabbids, uh, Metroid, uh, Samus Returns the, uh, at the eighth spot. Uh, Legend of Zelda is still doing it. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I think it's at number 10, if I'm not mistaken. So they got, they got 7, 8, and 10 spots. So they had three games on the top 10. And that's with 2 million units. And we're talking about how many PlayStation 4s are there out there? 70 million at this point or close to it? How many Xboxes? Around 30, 35, 40 million? And with 2 million, they're, they're all selling on the software side. This is incredible. Incredible, incredible. I hope this doesn't go to their head, and I hope that... Uh, you know, they continue to do good things for the most part. I mean, they have a couple missteps, but for the most part, Nintendo has kind of been doing the right thing. Uh, so I hope they keep it up and they don't let it go to their head for sure. Uh, Switch also released this week uh, a new uh, firmware update that's 4.0.0. Uh, and there's a few upgrades uh, uh, or changes, I should say. So the main one, the headliner is that uh, is there's going to be video capture. Of course, there's a caveat to that. So as of right now, uh, you can record up to 30 seconds max of video by pressing that same button, that same uh, uh, picture capture button. You're going to be able to post it over Facebook and Twitter. But right now, it's only a limited amount of games that are supported. So you got Legend of Zelda, uh, Mario Kart 8, ARMS, and Splatoon 2. Uh, with more to come for now, those are the games that are supported for this. Uh, you're going to also be able to edit your user icon, uh, which is a minor thing. You're going to be able to transfer. So this is something else that people have been asking for. So you're going to be able to transfer your user, save data from one system to another. Keep in mind that once you do that, it erases everything from the previous switch. Uh, but they added that feature. Uh, you're going to be able to pre-purchase uh, on the Nintendo eShop going forward. So that makes it so that you can download the game similar to what uh, Xbox and PlayStation already do. Uh, there's some new channel updates. Uh, you're going to be able to follow and unfollow new feeds. Um, and my software version with a group of local users. So, yeah, so you can uh, now, they're making it a little bit more user friendly. Uh, I mean, then some general improvements on that uh, there. I hope, I mean, right now it's just, it's 30 seconds. Um, and it's just those few games. But uh, hopefully this continues to, again, as they continue to do the right things, right? Uh, so far, they've been delivering on their promises. Uh, they've been releasing games. Most people were complaining about the lackluster of games, especially early on. And now it feels like it's the opposite, right? It feels like a clutter, uh, uh, you know, cluster buck um, of games. Uh, but kind of moving on from Nintendo, uh, Xbox uh, confirmed that their backwards compatibility for the original Xbox games is still on track for 2017. Um, that you know they've been basically partnering with partners and to make sure that this thing still comes out and still comes out strong 
Um, so <coughs> for those who uh, were, were waiting on that, uh, Xbox continues to do the right thing again. You know, kind of going back, it, it, it wasn't too long ago, a few years ago at this point that, you know, Xbox was making bad moves. They were announcing bad things. Uh, they kept saying the wrong things. And then for a while, right, they've been now kind of refocusing their efforts. They changed uh, the leadership there. They changed their focus. They got rid of the Connect basically without saying that they were getting rid of it. They started uh, creating these things and they saw an opportunity to um, kind of do this backwards compatibility thing, especially since Sony is not doing it right. They, they have their their streaming system, uh, but it's not exactly backwards compatible because they're trying to save the game. So this has definitely been a good thing for us. Uh, you know, you're going to be able to just it, turn on your Xbox and boom, you have a game that you purchased from previously. At least it happened with me. Every time I turn on the system, I feel like there was a new game that was approved and that I was able to play. Uh, <coughs> So this is definitely a good thing. And it's nice to see that they're still on track to do that. So uh, a couple more things here, guys. So there was a recent comparison with uh, the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X with Shadow of Mordor. Uh, Eurogamer basically had a, a test of sorts between the two systems. And they confirmed that this thing is way leagues ahead. I mean, PS4 Pro is no slouch by any means. Uh, and they said this in their article. Uh, but basically they and I've been kind of looking through the pictures here and you can see the difference it definitely looks better on the Xbox One X and this is when you're going to start seeing the leap and the differences and the reason for people to purchase this system right when you see it in action you're going to be able to see you know the true 4k support the the smoother graphics uh the 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 further uh, uh view or what do you call that the the you know you're gonna be able to longer distances within the game uh and those types of things running better higher frame rates better resolution uh and this is what xbox wanted right they wanted to be the the kind of cutting edge uh kind of system even though they know that they're gonna sell mostly the s version i think the x is gonna serve as their marketing way of saying you know this is the 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 most powerful console this is what it is and then when you see the commercial they show you the high end but you're going to most likely purchase the lower end one so again i'm looking at these photos now and they look freaking banging the lighting is is next level it, it is there's definitely a difference and it's pretty it's pretty gigantic the difference uh so uh, this is definitely going to influence some people to shift over again i'm going to link this down in the show notes for you guys and in the description on youtube for you guys but this game looks outrageously beautiful uh, on that system. So I'm definitely eager to see, uh, to, uh, see how that actually correlates into sales uh, for the Xbox One X. And then, guys, I did want to finish off with an announcement. So this is pretty exciting. As you guys know, uh, I'm a big proponent, proponent on physical game releases. Nothing against digital. Uh, I just prefer physical uh, you know, if I have a, a a deep discount on the digital front, I will purchase it. I'm not going to be approved or anything like that. But I just prefer to, I believe in the conservation of these games uh, going forward. And, and the, the way to conserve, conserve them is to put them on disc or cartridge in this case. So Limited Run Games is a, um, is a website which basically on a limited uh bases release physical versions of digital only games and it's, it's been picking up steam it's been very popular they, really, they usually put a few thousand uh copies of these out into the wild and then people kind of you got to go on there and click fast to be able to get the game and they've announced that into t going in uh, starting in 2018 you're going to be able to uh, also get physical versions of the nintendo switch games which is freaking phenomenal I'm going to be all over this. I feel like I'm going to get every single version of the game, uh, or every single game that they announce on there for the Switch. I've already been extremely supportive of them with a couple of Vita games and mostly PS4 games. Uh, but this is extremely, extremely exciting. Again, guys, I'm going to link that in the show notes for you guys if you guys haven't heard of that website uh, so you guys can support them. Uh, again, uh, this is a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, a thing that they're doing. So, 
uh, that's going to be it for the show, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I want to thank you guys for listening. And for those who are watching, I want to thank you guys for watching on YouTube. Uh, remember, guys, this show goes up every week. I, I, I've been kind of erratic with posting my episodes for at least for the short term here. I, I do have a full time job. This is a part time project for me. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm trying to correlate the best way. And it seems like the best thing I'm going to be able to do is record on Sundays, uh, post it up Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, most likely on Tuesday. Uh, going forward, I think that's going to be the case until further notice. So I can get kind of uh, consistent with it for you guys. Uh, I, this is something that I really enjoy doing. You guys listening. I definitely appreciate those who download it and those who listen. Uh, and I hope that you guys support and uh, kind of rate me and, 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 and share this with people who, I, who you think might like it. Uh, it's definitely going to help. And the more I see coming, the more I can lean and heavily, heavier to uh, this project. Um, so, again, I want to thank you guys so much for, for, for listening. I also want to announce there is a, uh, there is a local, um, not video game, there's a local a comic book shop here in Miami called MCC or Multiverse Corp Comics. Uh, they're on 8th Street and 142 for those who live here in Miami. Uh, and uh, Tony, which is the owner, has asked me to kind of join him. Uh, he wants me to help him lead the video, video game side of his um, his store there. So, great store. I'm not too big into comics necessarily, but uh, they do great there, man. They, they white glove their, their comics there. Uh, they package them there for you guys. Again, I'm going to link down uh, to their social media uh, in the description. Uh, so we're going to start recording. Uh, it looks like every Friday we're just going to talk about generally one video game. Uh, this week, <clears throat> in the, in, now that you know, Call of Duty is coming out, we're going to be talking a little bit about Call of Duty for you guys. I'm going to be adding it to the uh, episode here on the podcast for you guys. Uh, and a, a course on, on YouTube for you guys. So I hope that you guys join me uh, and listen to us there and watch us and support the channel. Uh, again, guys, I know this is, I, I kind of ran a little long here at the end, but I, I am extremely grateful, extremely thankful for you guys who download me. It's phenomenal to look at the statistics and, and find the amount of downloads that are, that are, that are, uh, that are happening from where they're happening all over the world. So again, thank you guys so much for listening and watching until next time, guys. Game on. Game on.